God, he was just pinned to it too. He saw me. Ooh, did you see him there? He just swirled at it again. There he is. Got him. There we go. Nice. All right. That didn't take too long, did it, James? Lure color is a popular yet controversial topic, perhaps more subject to personal preference than scientific fact. Big muskie, big, big fish, man. You got another one? Another big fish, this is a big one. I'm a sub boy, I'm a subby, huh? Yeah, that fish. Some colors and patterns arise as local favorites, based largely on their effectiveness in local fishing conditions. <laughs> I'd you, say. You know, you're starting to perturb me. He's taken my rod and my bait. And the front of the boat. Yes, and he's caught two. And perpetuated by reports of their success. The second one on the orange subwalk, and it's my rod, and I think I'm taking it back. Often, they closely mimic local forage species, giving credence to their widespread use. There she is. Got him? Yeah. It's a different fish, Whoa. James. What? It's a different one. Yeah, it's a different one. There's one. There you go, James. There's nice one. fish. Cool. Whoa. <laughs> oh, man. There's one. You oh. did it. Yeah. Big orangey. Whoa. Come here, buddy. Whoa. Whoa. Come here, buddy. That's a pretty Whoa. little leopard. Yeah. Other colors and patterns, however, seemingly have no tangible rhyme and reason explaining their productivity other than the fact that they do indeed work. Change color. Yeah, change color, change different crankbait. First time I've ever used that. In the end, it doesn't much matter if other anglers agree or disagree on color choices. Only that each is confident in their own color selections. It went, whoa, now we're talking. There you go, there's a whopper stopper for Now there's you. proof crankbaits catch big fish. <laughs> Look at that guy. Confidence spurs anglers to fish more effectively and to catch more fish in the process. Today, on The Edge, we explore color patterns for smallmouth bass, matching popular color combos to different lure styles and angling mechanics. Oh, I'm not sure if it's, oh, big fish. What a way to start, holy mackerel. Then we go trolling for Great Lakes brown trout, which often display distinct daily color preferences based on water clarity, sky conditions, and the whims of nature. Is color an important factor in fishing? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Since you never know for sure before you go, it pays to carry an assortment of likely lure colors and experiment to see which works best. There are so many different lures, so many presentations, and so many different things that we keep learning every year to whack these big brown beauties like this. In fishing, nothing beats the confidence and enjoyment that comes with using the best equipment. There's a reason why generations of professional anglers, guides, and camp operators make Lund 
their boat of choice. They stand up to the elements and the repeated use that hardcore anglers put them through, season after season. Their guide-tested, wilderness-proven. Isn't it time for you to experience the Lund difference? We tried beating it senseless, bending it in half, and punishing it with extreme temps, corrosive salt water, and blistering UV rays. And all Talon did was ask for more. So we wanted to know what Talon's breaking point really was. We'll let you know if we ever find it. Talon, born tough, tested tougher. Oh, there he is. Hey, you! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat boy, you can't get none of this. Look at me. I got moves. I go left, I go right, I go left again. Watch this, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Oh, there it is. Psych! I'm so erratic, I don't even know where I'm going. Come on, Chubby Cheeks. Come on, come on, Bucket Bob. Come on, come get some of this. I can do this all day long. <laughs> Look at me, watch this. Come on, come on. Your mama's so fat that she can't get out the fish net. Ow! I, I'll give you that one. It's time to put a new spin on innovation and touch off a revolution. It's time to push boundaries and leave our mark on the world. It's time to say goodbye to excuses, limitations, and half measures. It's time to get it together. New Onyx with Crosstouch. Now, everything you can do with a touchscreen, you can also do with a touchpad. Only from Hummingbird. Closed captioning provided by Freebill. Smallmouth bass, arguably one of the best sport fish in North America. Why, you might ask? Well, the answer is surprisingly simple. They like to bite, fight, and leap, and are generally not too vicky about what it is they're hitting. The smallmouth range has radically increased over the last 30 years because of management philosophy and angler ethics. These fish were considered strangers to most anglers back then. Now they are common all across the United States, north to south and coast to coast. While these little sticks of scaly dynamite can be caught on a wide variety of lures, everybody has their favorites, including Al Lindner, who's gonna give us the inside scoop on his favorite colors for bruiser bronze backs oh, all sure. across the country. Oh, big fish. What a way to start, holy mackerel. Oh, what a donkey pig. Ugh. What do you got him on now? What if, is she a pig? Is she ever a pig? Oh, baby. When you see the side, this thing is a, a mule. An absolute mule. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh. Oh. Oh, I, I, oh, I got her. Oh. <laughs> look at that fish. Wow. Uh, and, and look at the size of that smallmouth. That is a perfect specimen. What a beast. You know, if you've been watching us on the Angling Edge and followed our careers, and even if you go back to the days Ron and I owned in Fishermen, you often heard us say that smallmouth bass are our favorite fish. And uh, uh, they still are today. And I'm so happy that smallmouth fishing today is better than it's ever been. We've got more and bigger fish like this than we've ever experienced in this country. And man, we've learned so many more ways to catch them. There are so many different lures, so many presentations, and so many different things that we keep learning every year to whack these big brown beauties like this. Oh, look at that one, Ryan. Ain't she a monster? A gooder. I know all about color. And we're gonna reveal some secrets today on colors for smallmouth bass. Stuff you can take to the bank. Boy, that one fish was a big fish. I thought we'd get more than one off of here. That wind is blowing pretty, pretty good. I thought we'd start on a spot. It's right off the boat ramp. 
get out of the wind and go to the other side of the lake. I don't like fighting this stuff. Those fish are probably, my guess is they're probably shallower than this. This is just a kind of a real deep, deep spot out in the middle of the lake that gets an occasional big fish. Today it was only one, but it was the right one. Feels good to be out of the wind a little bit. Now see if the fish like it. Oh, got it right. Another good one. Another good one? Yeah. It feels good. Got him. Uh, now it's big, 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 big brownie. Big brownie. I gave him the Rainy Lake Shuffle with an orange crust. I'm gonna pull up here, Ron, Ron, Ron. This is a pretty good spot, spot with that wind in my back. Hang on, just let me get up a little further. Look at the size of that one. Let me tail in down here. There he is. Look at that baby. These are, these are the kind of smallmouth I like, I like getting into. These are real fish. Anytime, any place, these hot, uh, explosive looking baits, these kind of babies love it. Subtle isn't their bag usually. Wild and woolly, they like that stuff. There. Now that one, Ron is throwing the crush and I'm throwing the pink. It's amazing, like he was saying, how many parts of the country, anywhere that we have fished smallmouth in hard baits like this and jerk baits like this, there's a handful of colors that have worked for us, north, south, east, or west. And that orange crush is one of them. This pink color is amazing. And I, you know, you talk about throwing a pink color like this to smallmouth fishermen or that orange crush, they think, isn't that for salmon or something else? Smallmouth, love it. They love it, they love it, they love it. Let's have a little fun. Hypothetically, if I was stranded on an island and there was one lake and it had smallmouth in it, which wouldn't be bad, by the way, and I had to have a handful of baits and very limited colors, what would those baits be and what colors? Well, first off, I would have X-Wraps. This lure has the flexibility to be worked in ultra cold water to very warm water by just modifying my presentation. The two colors I would have would be a hot head and a hot pink. These colors are overlooked by many smallmouth fishermen and shouldn't be. They really produce big time. Next, I would have a jig and a tube and there's only one color for me, it's green pumpkin. I don't know how many bags that go through in a year, but it's a ton. Third, I would have a grub for my jig. The color I have the most faith in is plain old yellow. Fourth is a hair jig and you only need one color here, that's black. Fifth is a spinner bait, half ounce double willow leaf white. Six and seven are real simple, a frog pattern skitter prop and a five and a half inch muck probe worm on a drop shot. Eight and nine are a pink flutter worm and a pink minnow. Yeah, you heard me right, pink for both styles of plastic. I started messing around with this color and it blew my doors off. Smallmouth love it. Now color selection is very subjective. These are my color picks for primary smallmouth baits anywhere, anytime. It don't feel like a pike. It feels like a good smallmouth. It's a smallmouth and a good one. one. Big one. Gonna jump, jump on you. Yeah, he is, but I'm gonna keep him down. I'll swing it in this side. Net me, net me. He's swing got... it into the left. Oh, that's okay, a good, I... a nice fish. Nice fish. Okay. Nice fish. Nice fish. Keep, keep her here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, get away from the motor, man. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. You I got him. Lead I got, her into I got him. I got him yeah. wing hooked. All right. All right. You want him unhooked? Oh, you know, folks say that sometimes color doesn't make any difference, and other times color can make all the difference. 
That sound like a cop out? Well, not really, because there are times when indeed you could grab any color lure and throw it where those fish are on and catch fish on it. There are other times when they get real color specific. Uh, day in and day out, there are general rules, however, and in today's show, we saw what some of those general rules were for certain types of baits. Hey, if you want to get the most out of your bass fishing efforts, Bass Fine-Tuned Patterns reveals how to refine bass fishing basic tactics to catch more and bigger fish. Guaranteed, it's part of our Angling Edge instructional DVD collection, available at anglingedge.com. Really? You're seriously just gonna leave me in here? Yeah, I'm fishing deep today, Ike. Are you kidding me? These are perfect additions for pulling big bass out of heavy cover. Yeah? Heck yeah! Try one of these weedless wacky jigs. All right, yeah. It, it has an offset hook and stainless steel weed guard. Whoa! <laughs> ah. Sorry, Ike. Flip it in there, and its wacky action will have you pulling out one fat bass after another. Please! I can't say anything. Big one. Suffix 832 is constructed with seven strands of Dyneema and a single strand of Gore Performance Fiber. It's the roundest, longest casting line in the world. It offers superior abrasion resistance so you can fish it anywhere. It's the strongest, most sensitive, and durable small diameter braid ever to hit the water. Nice fish, Brett. Thanks. Suffix 832, always use the best line. And there she is, my first Mercury. 154 stroke, the lightweight heavyweight. And she comes with all this. Say hi to Wendy from customer support. She's always there to help. Jerry from product testing, he dishes out the torture. They can take it. Good. And Tim from design, he never misses a detail. Obsessed with quality. Bobby, prop engineer, he turns horsepower into performance. This is George. From it's good to have Mercury behind you. Meet the rest of the team at mercurymarine.com. You're gonna need a bigger boat. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. It's a great feeling to pull the boat out of storage for some early season fishing. It's also a great feeling when you can trust that your motor is going to start fast and run smooth after a long winter. Proper care in winterization is important to ensure that your engine will be ready to run, especially on your first outing of the next open water season. Here's a couple of important things we do each fall before putting the boat away. First, we add seafoam motor treatment to all our fuel. This keeps our injectors and intake systems clean, fuel fresh all year long. Stabilizes fuel by preventing varnish formation and controlling moisture. Secondly, we fog all our air intake systems and cylinders with seafoam spray top engine cleaner and lube. Whether you're storing an outboard or an ice auger, this is a simple process anyone can do. Spray into each carb and throttle body while the motor is running. Then with the motor turned off and cooled down, pull the spark plugs and lubricate each cylinder with a shot of seafoam spray. Also, remember to replace your outboard's lower unit oil and be sure all the water is out of the motor before storage. Well, right now it's the end of April and Jimmy and I are up on the south shore of Lake Superior. We're gonna do some brown trout trolling. Actually, we're gonna fish for what? Brown, brookies, salmon, Lake trout, quake. Possibly a rainbow. Yeah, there's like six different kinds of fish we're going after, but the, what we're gonna do mainly is long line troll and board troll with some new Rapala baits trying to catch these fish. The biggest thing is we're gonna be fishing with more conventional tackle. We're not mm. using a lot of different things that are associated with Great Lakes fishing, such as downriggers, lead core, various types of uh, co you know copper lines right. and that. It's not that Gypsy complex. Divers. We're taking classic walleye rod, you put a crankbait out and flatline troll and hopefully get some big 
some type of pro. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Ready to fire it out. You know, Jimmy and I are up here on the south shore of Lake Superior, specifically targeting brown trout. We'll catch a few other trout and salmon species along the way, but we are primarily looking for browns. The Great Lakes have some of the best brown trout fishing in the world. Some real giant fish have come out of these lakes. But not all places in the Great Lakes have good brown trout fishing. To find out where the best spots are to fish is often to go online, like to the individual state natural resources websites, and look up the stocking program and see how many fish have been put in and where. There are areas of these lakes where there are a lot of browns stocked and there are areas where they are not. You want to find locations where brown trout have been consistently stocked year after year. And those are the areas where you'll have your best success. A little more tolerable. Boy, you got the, you got the real extendo model. Oh, yeah, this is a real it. trolling net. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, staying, staying down good. Yeah. Our, uh, I'm just uh, keeping some good pressure on them. Other line here. I may, I may even be able to actually net them myself if you want to just man no, the boat. I, I got, I'll get them for you. Okay. I'm just keeping the boat just tipped forward slightly. We got us a pretty, you know, feels like a nice one, Jim. Yeah. Hasn't, haven't seen any colors yet though. Besides there we go. Nice yep. Bounty. Yep. Perfect. Come on, Come you. Here, buddy. Get them in there. Ready. There you go. All oh, right. Good. Got that little rascal wrapped up here. So one thing about doing this kind of trolling, a lot of times color makes a huge difference. And Jimmy and I put out like three different colored baits. The one color we did put out was this purple descent. So we had two lines out that had purple descent and both of them went. We got a shallow running shad wrap and a new scatter shad. And those were the two of the four lines that got hit. So early on, we're already starting to see that they might just be liking Purple Destin. And before long, we might put four of them out just because that's what they want. But this is really key. It's our speed. And what we're doing is moving along at as slow as possible. And that's one thing nice with this big tiller. This is a 94-stroke Mercury. It has the ability to actually adjust the RPMs to like a you know, a mile an hour, I can actually shift it up and down, actually tenths of a mile an hour to actually really accurately duplicate a specific speed depending on if we're trolling plugs or, or spoons, depending on the individual bait. And also, because if we're going into the wind or against the we're wind, gonna you got it, right there's, here. ooh, we smoking a big one there. There you go, there you go. As you can see, I got a whole bunch of these scatter wraps and it's this is sort of an interesting lure because what it does as you increase speed that besides just tracking straight it actually swims off to the on. right we got a to fish the right here. oh right here fish. i got one there you go another one i uh, guess what michael <laughs> yeah, yeah on this on that particular bay scatter how do you like shad. that <laughs> i like it spring fishing is always fun where we live in the north country we get cooped up in ice shacks for a good portion of the fishing season so when we get a chance to stretch our legs we do it this was the first filming trip of the year, so just getting out on the water was nice. This time of year is traditionally good for getting into big browns. Well, today the fish we caught were not huge, but they were still a good time on light tackle. Hey, the action we had was fast and furious. We had doubles quite a few times and boated cohos and some chinooks to boot. When it's all said and done, we got a cooler full of good eating, caught fish all day long, and cleared out some cobwebs of a long winter. Look at that guy there, beautiful fish. You know one thing, this early season brown trout fishing really gives a small boat fisherman some really unique Great Lakes fishing opportunities. Hey, for more detailed information or to purchase any products you've seen on this show, go to lindermedia.com. Why take chances with your engines? Protect them from neglect, wear, and tear the easy way with Seafoam Motor Treatment. Seafoam helps to maintain top engine performance by removing harmful deposit buildup from your engine and fuel system. Control moisture and gas and diesel. Stabilize fuel for up to two years and lubricate your engines to start easier, run cooler, and last longer. Trust all your engines to Seafoam Motor Treatment, the choice of mechanics for over 70 years.
Are you finding it harder and harder to spend time with your family? All you need is the right place to reconnect. <laughs> Big walleye, Dad. Here we go. This is fun. <laughs> Northwest Ontario, your place to reconnect. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Hey, I'm a big believer in prayer, and anytime I see anything in any magazine articles or something like that that I see the word prayer, it gets my attention. I go take a look at it. Here's an article that was titled, Seven Prayer Tactics. And the one that talked about pray faithfully, two, pray decisively, pray forcefully, pray lovingly. Pray truthfully, pray earnestly, pray authoritatively. And then it gives a you know, paragraph with a bunch of guides and reference to scripture on it. But when the author closed the article, I just want to read you the last things that she said. Prayer is a journey that is unique to everyone. Just as each of us has a different calling or job to do for God, each of us will travel a slightly different road in understanding what prayer really is. God will speak to each of us in different ways, and the way God speaks to one person can be markedly different from the way he speaks to another. God isn't interested in getting us to learn rules and requirements and living life merely by following the dictates of a rule book. He wants us to come to him that we might know him for ourselves. He wants a unique relationship with each of us as he created each of us as unique individuals. He wants to partner with us in a journey and live it out with us day by day. It's why he created humans, and it is his great joy when we come to him without doubt or compromise, wholeheartedly to get to know him and let ourselves be fully known by God. God is all about relationship, and the key to it is masterful prayer. When I read that, I was really blessed by it. I thought I would share it with you. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you in the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets.